Hi, so uh thought I'd mention a quick tip, something I've been working on, playing around with lately. As a look dev artist, materials guy, I tend to try to find ways to detail my assets, and this is something I came up with. There is a program called PhotoFly. Well, it used to be called PhotoFly in beta form. Now it's called 123D Catch by Autodesk. It's capable of taking an array of photos that you take at different angles of your subject uh, and acting as a, like a scanner and creating 3D mesh output. It's actually pretty awesome. So uh, give it a try. You can download it here at 123D app. I know it looks like a child a child's interface here and it is kind of annoying but it does produce some pretty impressive results so my goal is to create a 3d object from a text from something textural so uh, let me show you real quick so here's the app I want to create for example some bark I don't quite remember which one is uh, this one we will grab these images 1, 2, 3D catch, very simple, compute photo scene, name it, bark demo, and wait. It'll take a few minutes to go to the cloud, calculate your asset, but once you're done, I will pause this and I'll show you the result. All right, so it comes back like this. Take a look at the mesh. Um, actually, there, there is a skip step here and I'll, I'll name it. When it first comes back, it'll come back as a fairly low res object. I've already done the processing, but what you do is when it's low res, it gives you a preview of what it's going to look like. Click this button, hit maximum, say OK, and you're going to wait for longer. It's going to calculate um, a higher res mesh. This already is that higher res mesh. So the resolution of this final mesh is determinant on the resolution of your camera, the number of pictures you take, and how close up you get to various subjects. You can see there are some photos that are closer than others in my array of images. It's hard to tell, but there are, and you can tell by the density of the mesh in certain regions. This area has captured more detail than this area because I have more close-up images. But uh, that's the, the general method here. The model is pretty detailed and I think very useful as bark for a uh, sculpting brush, say, in, or a stencil in Mudbox, ZBrush, or what have you. So the great thing is here you can export the scene as an OBJ or an FBX. I always try OBJ first because it's simple, clean, and usually works pretty well in most anything, but sometimes the OBJs this program spits out are uh, hard for Maya to read and it fails. So as a backup you've always got FBX and that will work. Alright so here I've just jumped to importing the FBX. The OBJ of course didn't work on this one. It imports huge. So the first thing I'm gonna do is well we'll take a look at the model here but do a little mesh cleanup. Oh you can see it also brings in all the cameras from the various angles of the photos that you took not really important here. So I tend to do a little cleanup. I'll grab all my all my objects which would be under here and under polys, mesh, combine then I'll grab all the verts and weld them. We'll go into vertex select them all mesh, actually edit mesh merge and I'm also going to scale it down and align it so let's just skip ahead to a finished uh, ready to go scene here. Alright so I basically al aligned this, shrunk it down to a reasonable size near the grid and I've created a plane and I've kept it square but I've used a bend, nonlinear bend deformer to sort of wrap it in the same general shape as my object. So the goal here is to take a mud box or ZBrush, you could even do it in Maya, I'm not really familiar with it, 
but do a ray cast and bake all the displacement detail from the high res object and bake it down into the plane as a texture. So I'm going to go through that process in Mudbox because I'm more familiar there. So I export both, and you probably need to delete history before you export it, but uh, once you do, file modify edit delete by type history because that bend might not work well in Mudbox. I happen to have the send to Mudbox, so let's just do that. So here we are in Mudbox after uh, exporting into it. We, uh, we've got the polyplane and the mesh. You can turn off the polyplane if you want. Just see that. We could, if we wanted to, do some cleanup in here, smooth things out, do some additional sculpt detail. That's not really the point of this, so let's just uh, do the extraction. So we'll turn the polyplane back on. Go to Maps, Texture Extract. I'm um, just going to, we could do a vector displacement map, which would be very cool, but sort of another tutorial. Uh, but we'll just do a traditional displacement map. Um, let's see. We want our source model to be the high res, so we'll remove the polyplane and our target to be the polyplane. So there we go. We don't need to smooth target UVs because they are, uh, I'm not subdividing UVs don't need to smooth that. We can best guess the search distance. That's probably a decent guess. I think point in my earlier tests a point one was pretty good for uh, for this. We'll do closest to low res mesh. Ray casting, test both sides. I'm gonna do a 4k and when I spit this out we can do a little anti-aliasing. When I spit this out I'm going to want to choose a 16-bit file format, so 16-bit uh, TIFF would be good. We don't want to go 8-bit because that's not enough information to get all the detail. You could do float, but 16-bit works, works great and it's Photoshop friendly and I'm gonna show you that process now. So um, spit it out, extract, and you're good to go. Let's switch to Photoshop. Alright, so here's the raw displacement spit out of uh, Mudbox. We've got an image size of 4096, 4K. Let's do some cleanup because if I'm going to use this bark map as a uh, sculpting or texturing tool in ZBrush or Mudbox, I'm going to want to have it tile ideally. So we'll do the standard offset. We'll do, uh, since it's 4K, we'll go, we'll split it halfway. We'll go uh, 2048. Probably a better idea to do this one at a time, so we'll zero that out. And just start doing some quick heel brush sort of stuff. We'll go there. Ba -ba. Healing. It's 4K, so it takes a moment to calculate all that. But you can see I'm just painting out the seams, picking a point over here. So you can do a much better job, but I'll show you the final real quick. So after some quick manipulation, healing, this is my final tileable texture map. We'll do a quick offset just to show you the, all right, there you go, down the middle. Pretty good. Cancel that. Uh, I've reduced the image size to about 3K because I cropped a little bit of information out. This is totally up to you as to how you handle it, but this is ultimately my my final image. Also, the, the other thing I did was do some basic levels to bring uh, everything into a more reasonable range. Because we're 16-bit, there's still plenty of information in my histogram and will be plenty of information to sculpt detail. So I'll quick show you the use of the brush. All right, so back in Mudbox, we will create a mesh. Tree stump would be a nice thing to go with. Give it a few subdivisions to pick up any sculpt detail. Boom, seven million, sounds fun. Go to the image browser, find the tiled image that I spit out. We'll apply it as a stencil to my sculpt brush. 
There we go. Stencil can be rescaled. Let's hit use tiles. There we go. Get closer in and let's start sculpting. Bring down the strength. Cool. Turn off the stencil. So you get the basic idea. Pretty useful stuff. You can always go in and smooth some of that stuff out. It's uh, a little obnoxious. There you go. Just for fun, turn on some ambient occlusion so we can see the detail a little better. Some cavity. Uh, cavity's a little much. So, there you go. That's sort of what I'm talking about, usefulness of uh, extracting displacement textures. Hopefully you find it useful. I'll talk to you later.